life right, cause they can't miss All about the game, that's a cold swish Serving up the truth, call it ruthless Tune in and get your fix from Blake and Fish Sports So far, but we can get on to another guy Who's also looked just as incredible as Herbert And that's Matt Stafford Vish is one of his favorite quarterbacks besides Trey Area, Trey Lance Matt Stafford played against Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers. Um, their secondary was a little depleted. That needs to be said. But regardless, Matt Stafford put on an absolute show. I want to say he had four touchdowns. He had over 300 yards. The offense looked incredible. Um, Vish, what were your thoughts? Yeah, so, I mean, my thoughts were – I've been expecting this from Matthew Stafford. If you put him on a good team, it's it's funny how, you know, you give a guy good coaching, good defense, and all of a sudden a so-called big game, he shows out. You know, it's crazy how your surroundings have to do something for that with the quarterback. But sarcasm aside, he was everything I thought he could be. I think he's an unbelievable quarterback. I've always felt that I think he's really smart. I think he's good in the pocket. I think he manages the pocket well. I think he moves well within the pocket. And then his arm talent and accuracy obviously stand out. I actually thought he started the game a little over Ant. He missed a couple of gimme throws um, that were free. And we're going to talk about the effect play calling has on a player. But I thought one of the best things McVay did was when he missed those gimme throws in those first two drives and was one for six, that 95 yard drive when they started from the five, McVay immediately called a screen, a couple of screens. He called a couple of very easy completions. And before you know it, knew it, Stafford had completed three in a row and they'd picked up a couple of first downs. And then Stafford started to feel it and he started throwing balls like the one on the wheel route to uh, a cup. He that was an absolute dime. Um, the ball to Deshaun Jackson, finally, when he did connect, I mean, that was effortless flick of his wrist, just put it out there for him. He's an unbelievable quarterback. I, I think most people who've kind of watched him expected him to show out in this situation. But I also thought it was nice because when a player is over uh, amped and you see what a play caller, a very smart, good play caller can do to build a player's confidence. <clears throat> One of the quarterbacks we're going to talk about today uh, <clears throat> Matt Nagy did not do those things for his young quarterback, but that's for later. But the point is, Matthew Stafford is an unbelievable talent. I'm glad everybody's able to realize it now. He is, he's always been a borderline elite quarterback. And you look at their weapons, I mean, the Rams' weapons, Van Jefferson, Cooper Cup, they haven't even really gotten Robert Woods going in this offense. Oh, Jamal is all over. <laughs> Deshaun Jackson, it's stacked. I thought Sony Michelle played very well. I thought Sony yeah. Michelle was unbelievable in pass pro. And I actually thought he did a decent job running the football because I didn't think there was a lot of space because Tampa Bay has a historically good run defense. Um, so I thought Sony Michelle was a real positive. And then, of course, their defense, the Rams defense is good on every level. I think their linebackers, I think Hollins is pretty good. I think Kenny Young is pretty good. I think they're fast. They fly around. Obviously, the secondary is very good, though they played soft a lot in this game, giving up a lot of free access intermediate and tightened up later. And then the defensive line, they had the baddest man in the NFL in Aaron Donald. And then you pair him with, you know, guys like Leonard Floyd and Joseph Day, who are pretty good. Terrell Lewis, who whacked Gronk. And you get positive results because you have Aaron Donald, who's so big time. So absolutely, yeah. I, I, I think that um, Matthew Stafford was unbelievable. He was everything I thought he was going to be. And I mean, I, I don't want to say I'm excited because I'm not excited for the Rams to be good. I'm a Niners fan, but they look like a Super Bowl team and they have a Super Bowl quarterback. Yeah, I think I was going to point it out if you didn't, but he struggled early on. He missed a couple. Deshaun Jackson, he might be four, but he looked like he was in his prime. Like he was getting acres of separation. The first two times he got past the defense, the safety's deep. There was just a bad throw, and I was like. I think that's more than enough arm to get it there. Just could connect with him. He did it himself later with the bomb, and then he also hit him on a crosser too, which Deshaun just looked incredibly fast on that as well. And it's kind of crazy to me how they haven't even utilized they haven't even utilized Robert Woods at all. Like he was so great last year and maybe because that's, he does a lot more short stuff and they 
he's been blocking a lot and he takes handoffs and all that kind of thing. But Cooper Cup has been great. That one route um, in the red zone where he did like a fake in and then out, that was I, – I've never That's seen that. Third and Renfro. Third and Renfro. Yeah. Renfro. yeah. He probably invented that. I wouldn't be surprised because he's incredible too. But, um, yeah, I mean, they have all the weapons in the world. And I, I really thought Sony Michelle looked really good compared to what I thought he would be. And he's not mm-hmm. – he's looked a little like lethargic, not explosive on the Patriots the last few years, but he did great. And I, I really, I was going to say kind of the same thing with the short stuff. They called tight end screens so effectively. I think there was like two or three on that second drive, on mm-hmm. the really long drive. You just, it's so effective, so simple, but it really helps the quarterback uh, build confidence. And I mean, if you can get it to work, you do it. So they were able to do that effectively, but the Rams did look very scary. And the defense looked really, really solid, too. I know they keep losing guys, but when you have the two best defenders in the league, it almost doesn't even matter. Um, yeah. We'll see We'll see it as the season goes on. The only negative that I thought or from this that I took from the Rams was the McVay celebrating like it's the Super Bowl, and I, I didn't even really – think about that until I saw someone else say it. It was actually Skip Bayless tweeted, you would have think that the Rams just won the Super Bowl. And I kind of agreed with no, him. It seemed a bit excessive. Kind of, at he time. blacked. He definitely blacked. He was seen red. Something wrong. Yeah, yeah McVay was definitely seeing red there. He just lost his mind for that second half. He was going crazy. Yeah, I mean, even the even the Deshaun Jackson touchdown when he just who was the first guy to greet him, like, geez, that's kind of crazy. Anyhow, that that's just what I took away. But yeah, not to get too distracted. Stafford, Stafford looked incredible um, against a good defense too. Against a good D line, we yeah. said their secondary was a little injured, and you can tell, but their D line's still that's, really good. That's 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 the difference for McVay when he realized he doesn't have to run a kind of gimmicky offense built around play action and bootlegs and a bunch of throws to the flat and a lot of nakeds and all of that. And, you know, they only ran three play action, three true play action plays yesterday. And they didn't run mm-hmm. a lot of play action, to be fair, against the Bucks a year ago when Goff lit them up, when they just kept rolling them out to the right and throwing the ball short and throwing the ball short and ripped them up with that quick pass game that was real effective last year. But so in Tampa, so to be fair to Goff, but you can just see how comfortable Matthew Stafford is dropping back, consistently making decisions and big, great decisions and big boy throws and standing within the pocket and delivering. He's clearly, he's clearly a special, special quarterback. I think most people who really watched him, again, knew that this was a special talent and were just seeing him come into full flow with that. It's almost like having Javid Best and Joyk Bell, Reggie Bush past his prime as your, you know, best playmakers outside Calvin is just not the best way to build a team. Yeah, but Blake, Blake, he had Calvin Johnson. He had bad offensive lines, didn't have a running game, <laughs> didn't have good defenses, but Blake, he had Calvin Johnson. Why didn't he win 50 games? And Marvin Jones and Golden Tate. And Golden Tate. Yeah, yeah. Now, Real Marvin Trump. Jones, especially Marvin Jones in Cincinnati was some special player before he got with Matthew Stafford. He was giving A.J. Green, he was making A.J. Green and Mo Sanu look like they were not even the number one receiver on that team. He was the best by far. I mean, you would think that the way people talk about Marvin Jones and Golden Tate, but yeah, he had nothing in Detroit. They had competent coaching for three years with Jim Caldwell, and that was it. Yeah. We're to seeing be, them. I mean, fair, Marvin, Marvin, Jones. Marvin Jones has been really good on the Jags this year. Just wanted to throw that out there, but obviously. No, he yeah. has. He has. He's no doubt. Ryan. No doubt. Marvin. I didn't mean to diminish him either. Marvin Jones is a good player. There's no doubt about that. 